What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Banks. And we back in the building, you feel me? It's True Talks. Because True Talks, all right? Let's get straight right into it. So you already know, obviously, a deal has been done for Pascal Siakam. The Raptors finally got the trade. I've been, you know, talking about this from time, from long ago, long ago, long ago, where I've been preaching, move Pascal so Scotty could elevate to a whole new monster. And again, if OG was here, he would elevate to a whole new monster. And I've been, it's not that Pascal is trash. It's not that Pascal is, is that the end, the end of the day, you have Pascal and Scotty, you got to go younger. They're the same prototype in terms of their weaknesses and the strengths are the same. Right. So obviously, Scotty's the better passer. And, you know, right now, obviously, Pascal might be the better scorer or whatever the case is. Right. But Scotty could get into that and he's hella young. At the end of the day, you stick with the young one. You wouldn't trade Scotty and keep Pascal. That makes negative sense. So that's why I've been saying trade Pascal, trade Pascal, get some pieces from for him. And then you elevate everybody else. It's funny that now. Everybody, oh my God, Banks, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And now he ends up getting traded and people are come mad about the trade hours for peanuts or whatever the case is and look like, oh, you got traded for more than and whatever the case. And no, dog, when true talks, you listen, fam. I've been told y'all from long time ago, especially last year, I said Pascal was supposed to have been traded when his stock was high. His stock would have been higher. He would have had a year in his deal which means the options and the offers you would have got it would have been the, at its highest. But the problem is you want more. You want more. You want more. So you don't trade him. And now look what you end up trading him for. I promise you. Again, Masai is a genius, and he maximized this trade given the situation. And, the, and pending the other offers that he was getting. This is light years ahead. Or, like, this is great compared to what they would have done if Masai didn't do this. Because there was no way they were keeping him. Right? And everybody else knew that, which is why they were kind of reluctant, 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 offering pe peanuts, peanuts, peanuts. But again, you wouldn't be in this scenario if you just traded him and had foresight and traded him a year ago when his stock was high and it was all NBA and all of that was happening, even though the Raptors were losing. Individually, Pascal was all NBA and had his best year. You trade him then when his value is high because you know at the end of the day you're going to have to trade him at some point because him and Scotty are a clash. This is what I've been preaching and what I've been saying, but y'all be looking at Banks as this. You don't know what he's talking about. Da, 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 da. I don't need to be credited. I don't need to be, you don't need to know him, uh, what Banks is done. I speak facts. That's all. When true talks, you listen, fam. It's not like, it's about, it's just IQ. That's what I do at the end of the day. It's not even about anything else. Man's hoop for real. You know what I'm saying? It's not about anything else. Oh, my God, Banks, how do you know more than what a GM? But yet they be doing the same shit I be saying and preaching from time. Like, what are we talking about? Mans are just mans, no matter who they is. Someone else could have the skill, too. Just because a man didn't make the league don't mean he doesn't have pro ability. Who you talking to? Just because that person don't be singing for real, don't, uh, don't be singing or don't have a contract, don't mean they can't sing and can't hold the mic. and do. Go to an open mic. You'll be surprised who you can see singing. What are we talking about, yo? You got to think for, like, there's men who know the game. They don't just have to be a GM to know the game. What are we talking about? Anyways, that's, the sp that's, that's besides that. The point is, Pascal was traded too late. And this is the problem that sometimes the fans, especially as I'm speaking, y'all be thinking from, and it's not y'all fault. I'm just explaining what happens. A lot of the times, maybe my communication, I don't know. There's some disconnect where the fans think they know what they're talking about. Or they do know what they're talking about. A lot of fans have IQ. And they be knowing what they're talking about. But a lot of the times, they know what they're talking about. But it's only to this realm. They can't see years down the line and can't envision. That's another skill set, envisioning. It's hard to do that. But envisioning based on what you have and envisioning. Because sometimes you can't see. You don't know what OG would be until he is that. And a lot of times, this is why you see a lot of the times trade that guy get rid of him then they go to another team and then that guy becomes a whole different guy and y'all never foreseen that look at Tyrese Halliburton y'all didn't foreseen that but the Pacers did you know what I'm saying like you have to understand this is what be happening this is where this is where the skill set comes in in drafting y'all seen a guy in college but y'all don't see him 
when you're drafting him, how he would be with this team, with this personnel, and this spacing. It's a whole different game. Can you foresee that? That's where another skill comes in. Masai is a genius. Masai is elite. Masai, I have no issues with him. The only problem that I have with him is that he will trade man's too late that he's loyalty to. His loyalty sometimes is his downfall. Right? Because I know he has IQ. He came in right away, traded Dem- Demar for Kawhi. He used IQ. Everyone was hating on that trade. I was saying, this is not a this is a beautiful trade. Beautiful trade. Because the Raptors will only get a star studded caliber player, a superstar caliber player, sometimes when they're ailing and now they have to prove themselves. It was a perfect scenario. So that one you and no wonder they got a ring in the first year that the man came. Because, again, it's the levels. Y'all don't see that. Y'all, oh, my God, DeRozan. The, y'all don't see that, especially when you see playoff DeRozan is nowhere near playoff Kawhi. There's, that's not even a, that shouldn't even be in the same sentence. My fault Kawhi even did that. You shouldn't even, that's not even like, that's not even like, <laughs> come on now. That's like eighth grade to a one grader in terms, of, that's the separation how far they are. Like, that's disrespectful for me even like, you know what I mean? Like. But at the end of the day, again, Masai is a genius. The only issue that I have with Masai, again, we're talking about, we're, ta- we're having genius talks. We're talking about in like high IQ type of talks. His, high, his, high, his IQ is very high, but sometimes he will do a trade too late when it now is involving the Africans that he obviously wants to keep and mold with. And he has another agenda as well, which I'm rocking for, right? He has another, he's doing two things at once. But sometimes you got to just know when it's not the right African, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or the African ran its course. You got to trade him. Because the Scotty that you have now is clashing with Pascal. You got to move him. Right now, it's hot. His stock is hot. Trade him. Sometimes he'll be reluctant because he has hope. I want him to still be here. I have hope that our team could start winning. And the hope, the hope sometimes. And I do that, too, sometimes with guys that I know that are elite or that I, you know, you, you know that he is him. So you have hope or you can kind of foresee things. Hope you know, you know what I mean? And sometimes it doesn't go that way. So it's not that I'm mad at Masai, but it's still, me again is calling a spade a spade. That's what I do because the game It's about the passion for the game first and everything else second. Authenticity first and everything else second. So when I talk about Masai, I'm not talking about in this realm, in this basic realm. I'm talking about in this realm. I talk about things like, again, I know Messiah's high IQ, so I know that dog. You could have traded Pascal when he was hot for bare three indie guys or even a one-two shot creator but of caliber of a, a good name, maybe a Jordan Clarkson, whatever the case is. I don't know who, but you could have traded him for, you could have got some names. You're ready. Come on now. Pascal, at the end of the day, was an all-NBA guy. But again, you're running the risk of how he, just because he's all-NBA does not mean he's the same all-NBA. Again, that's another thing that you got to talk about where, how we view Pascal and how Toronto views Pascal is not how the rest of the league views Pascal. So Masai, because he has certain things in play, he has all NBA, he has this, he has all star. He has okay, you know what? Anyone of this caliber demands this. I seen what Dane was traded for. I seen what KD was traded for. He demands something in that realm. They're like, are you stupid? Hell no. And that's been. What he's been holding on to for all these times he's been looking to trade Pascal is like, nope, 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 nope. And then look, what you ended up trading for him, is that equivalent to what has been offered for him before? I don't think so. I think he had more value before and other things. But again, it's more so you sometimes you think what you, he is is more than what he is. And that's where I come in to say, come on, Masai, don't be biased. You know he's not like that when you watch him. In terms of the, in terms of KD and them, he's a good, he's above average, he's an all star, but there's levels. So again, when you look at it from that perspective, that's one thing that's in play as well too. But for me, what I was mad about with Masai, just to clear it up before we talk about the actual trade, I was mad about how the fact that they had OG and they had Scotty. I know that OG has high value. Again, that's why he got traded in people's eyes for more value than what Pascal got traded for because RJ and Quickly are very high value. You might not ever draft guys like that. Well, we'll talk about that. And then, again, if you trade Pascal and you get whatever you get, you now have a team, again, a distant by subtraction. Scotty will elevate to a whole new guy where he would finally be able to be Draymond Green 2.0, which is a bucket getter 
which is someone who could score and be aggressive, but also a defensive menace. That's who he is. And that's Draymond 2.0, which is literally a 2010 guy. 27-7, 22-7. Like, that's a menace. He's already that. And he's and that was without the spacing. Imagine how you give him the spacing. No log jam. Oh my God. Scotty's about to go. It's time, Scotty. So I already knew that Scotty will already you already you it's like by releasing an all-star, you gain a superstar. Scotty could be that. Draymond Green 2.0 is a all is a beyond a guaranteed all-star. In between superstar or superstar, however you want to play. It depends how it looks. It depends what's around. If he has the perfect fit, no log jam, that's a, that could be a superstar easily. 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 So, And this is why I don't call him Giannis because Giannis lacks vision. Giannis lacks certain things. Scotty and Giannis lacks certain defense. Like This is why I don't come. I, a Draymond 2.0 to me is even higher than what Giannis is. Because y'all don't really understand who Draymond really is. When you add an aggressive, bucket-getter, athletic, you know, paint mashing, like you add that with a guy who could already has all the intangibles in the world, that's, that's a superstar, MVP player. That's an MVP type of player. Because Draymond, you can see his impact already. He's just not MVP because of his numbers. will never be that. But a 2.0 version of that is an MVP type of player. So when you look at it from that perspective, when I talk about Scotty. You release that in terms of Pascal, you trade him. Then OG elevates to a two-way guy, a Jeremy Grant type of player. You have those two guys. You have Trent. You have other shot creators or whatever. You have a better version of Indiana. And that's what I see. The Raptors go that, that direction. You're going to have guys want to come here. You're gonna, that's, the, that's the way to change the trajectory of the Raptors for the foreseeable future. Young, athletic, can get buckets, have defense, you know, unselfish. You add now, now you can even just add one, just one, just add one guy who needs to res- resurgence of his career, but he's a bucket getter and a closer. And now that's the final piece. You get what I'm saying? And that's what I, that's the envision that I have where Masai could have took that team that direction. But trading Pascal, trading OG, kind of took takes it in that direction, but at a lower tier. You know what I'm saying? You, that's what I, that's what that's for me. But it's still in that realm now when you get quickly in RJ, which is beautiful, because RJ again could be an all-star. You now have an all-star caliber player. But again, I I just the defense capability, Scotty can't be the only great defender. OG OG and Scotty defensively were that was a great, like, that's like Paul George Kawhi. Like, like that's beautiful. That's what you needed. But RJ could tap into that. So again, I digress. But the point is, that's what I was comparing and complaining and getting angry about with Masai in terms of making a mistake. Because I still think that's a mistake. Just again, I'm just comparing two final outcomes of two Raptors teams. With, and this hard, you can't really see that and envision that. It's just kind of you have to use your brain and kind of, you know what I mean? But that's what a lot of people don't understand or can't foresee. They only know what they could see. They only see OG as what they see him. Which is why I was trying to show clips of those nine games to start the season where he was a whole different guy by his takes and everything. But people don't see that. Imagine I was able to be there. Because OG's not going to do that on his own. He's going to play his role. But when he's now in a new role and they tell him, we need buckets from you, he's going to do that. And that's what he was doing. So you can't compare him in an other role. And because he's not getting buckets and you can't see it, means he won't ever do it. His role in New York is still the same role that he had with the Raptors. It's just He's just going to be able to get the ball more because, again, those shot creators are going to dictate. And, you know, and they're going to. Anyways, but the point is, that's what my knock was against with Masai in terms of certain scenarios. It's just, it's just a high IQ conversation with Masai. But overall, he's a magician. So now let's go look at the actual trade and let's dissect this. I don't want to make this too long, so let's dissect this as quick as I can. So let's look. The Raptors traded Pascal to the Pacers. The Pacers received Pascal Siakam and a future second round pick. And that was from the Pelicans because they got added into the deal. The Raptors got Bruce Brown from the Pacers. Jordan Norora from the Pacers, Kira Lewis from the Pelicans, because they got in there. And then two 2024, um, so next year, first round pick, this year, sorry, first round picks from the Pacers and a 2026 first round pick. We don't know what that first round pick is going to be, but it's at least in the top um, 30, right? So at least you get a top 30, you get two top 30 picks. And... To me, I don't care about the picks in this scenario because they could be wherever. It might end up panning on being great, but picks are like 
they're a lot of the times overrated because, again, the Raptors haven't even been drafting great if you look at it. They drafted Pascal, they drafted Scotty, but for the most part, they haven't drafted, like, you know what I mean? Them, them, them ones other than those two. Especially under the Maasai helm, they've been drafting, you know what I mean? So the picks, like, come on now. Right. So when you look at it from that, because you have to get it right. That's another part of the picks. It's not just the picks. You have to get it right. But when you look at it, Bruce Brown, I do like, again, three and D guy, but more than a three and D guy, Swiss Army knife, could ball handle, could create, could slash, could play like a big, could short roll, could shoot. He's everything. You know what I mean? So and defend. He's going to definitely do wonders. And it's just in the log gem, the smaller guards. I don't know where the minutes. I think he's still he's going to get minutes regardless because his energy, whatever. But. I don't know how they're going to play that, but there's more spacing so he could do whatever because Pascal's not there. So I'm not mad at that. Again, I think that's going to be good. Um, and, you know, people don't know about Jordan or, or Kira Lewis. And, you know, obviously to the naked eye, it's like, that's all you got for Pascal and all NBA. So people are looking at this as a bad trade, but I'm going to here to clear the air. I'm, that's what I'm here to do. I give that IQ. That's what I do. A lot of the times I'm always on like, Whatever the masses is saying, I normally just don't be saying that because it's not that I choose that way. It's just my IQ, just I see what I see. And a lot of the times, I guess the masses don't see what I see. So it just happens to play out that way. What I see from this is that I see a guy in Maasai that is always finding a way, a way to make lemons or make lemonade out of lemons. That's who I see and then sell it and just get. He's always maximizing every scenario. So what I mean by that is even though OG, you know, is in contract year and all that type of stuff, trading him and maximizing that trade, getting RJ in quickly. Like that's maximizing what you could get from OG. That's beautiful given the context. Because again, that's part of the reason why Masai doesn't rush to do trades because he knows in the back of his mind that at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, when push comes to shove, I could get an elite deal no matter what when my back's against the wall. That's kind of like when the Celtics be playing and, we don't need to try because when push comes to shove, when push comes to shove, when we need to actually try, I'm going to turn up for real because I'm elite. And it's a gift and a curse because sometimes you might not be able to turn up when it's time. You know what I mean? In a game seven or you might get injured or whatever because they do trust themselves to turn up. But something might happen and now you're in a bad scenario where you could have just won 4-2. You could have just won 4-1 if you just tried every game. Don't put yourself in that scenario. You get what I'm saying? And that's equivalent to Masai in a sense that a lot of the times he's going to, he's a diamond in a rough. He's going to maximize whatever scenario he's in, whatever, like Pascal. And that's why I say this is a great trade for the Raptors, not because of when you isolate it by Pascal himself individually. And you look at it from all the years of what Pascal has done. And you just look at it and you could, if you were to assume this is what he's going to get traded for, horrendous. But. Given the scenario where now the offers are in and where they're at, the trade deadline is looming. Man's know you have to trade him. And, and the fact that he's a free agent coming into the summer and all of that type of stuff, like this is the best trade that Masai could have got for him, given the context and the scenario. This is why this is a beautiful trade for the Raptors, given the scenario, not for what he was supposed to get traded for. And if you traded him a year ago when he was actually hot. So that's why Raptors fans are probably annoyed or mad at this trade and looking at it as like it's peanuts. You know what I'm saying? Because of what Pascal's worth should be. Again, two things. I already know Pascal's worth, what y'all think it should be, is never what it would ever be. Even if he could have got more. No one, is, no one is giving the world for Pascal. They don't rate him like that. They don't. It's not because he doesn't have skill. It's not because he's not... His skill is limited, but it's not because he's not a good player or whatever. It is, I look at it from most of the guys that are superstar guys or all-star guys that are like elite, elite. They have high IQ and they have skill mixed with their high IQ. So they're like this. Pascal does not have high IQ. He just has natural skill, um, raw talent, and he added more skill to it. But he doesn't have the intangibles and the high IQ, which is why he's always looked at to the wars the other guys around the league and everybody else as like a best version of himself would be second option in terms of like winning on a winning team, second option, third option, because he doesn't have the skill set or the high IQ to masquerade his, you know, to mask his skill set. He doesn't have that. He's always going to make a mistake. He's going to make crucial mistakes all the time because he's like a Darren headlights. He doesn't have high IQ. Like some guys, some players just don't have high IQ with the game. They're just not a high IQ player. Right? So, 
and he's just not. He's just, it's just calling a spade a spade. He's not no knock against him. I'm talking about intangibles. I'm not talking about like getting a buck and spin lay. He's just always going to make a mistake, multiple mistakes a lot of the times. It's like how some people view Westbrook sometimes. It's not high, high, high IQ sometimes. It's a gift and a curse, right? Pascal is along those lines as well, too. It's not that he's not a good guy, but in terms of just reading the game, he kind of messes up a lot of the times in those. So it's, I'm not going to trade my best, all my Mikhail Bridges, Cameron, Cameron, you know, I'm, uh, um, what's his name? Cameron Johnson type of guys for him and picks. I'm not going to do a KD type of trade. I'm not going to do a Dame type of trade. I'm not going to do a Paul George type of trade and you get a Shea back. That's never going to happen with Pascal. So Raptors fans, we're supposed to get cut that out. You're supposed to cut that out. Never, uh, never expect that. But, you know, Raptors fans are always going to do that. But, again, what I'm speaking to is the fact that Masai got this trade off at this caliber just explains to you and shows you the type of G, uh, type of whatever Masai is, because he'd be, he be doing that. I don't even want to call him. He's basketball operations, obviously, you know, president, but he does everything. So he's just elite. He's just elite, which is why he got elevated to that. He's just hella elite. He's going to maximize every scenario. But the reason why I may say, like, Masai had to choose an option of he could either make a trade where he gets peanuts for him, lose. Let's him go for peanuts, lose. Resigns him. That's a lose because, again, you're going young. The only way he was op- going to be able to win, given this scenario where mans aren't trading for you, they don't rate Pascal that high. On top of that, they're, he's not, it's not guaranteed he's going to resign. On top of that, on top of that, he also is not as skilled and all. You know what I mean? All these things is like, and then on top of that, you add the fact that he's a free agent. And on top of that, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, and they know you have to trade him with the deadline looming. All those, you know, things add into that. You're not going to get a great offer or the offer you want. So, the, so Masai had an option as, you know what, let me try and get some under the radar guys that are going to be high value with us. And we're going to appreciate them and maybe a steal. While I get the picks and everything, and that's the why, that's why Masai has high IQ because the one guy that people aren't going to talk about, they're not going to speak about. But I hope I've seen him, I've seen enough, and I've been always saying this guy is nice since he was on Milwaukee. Jordan Nuara, he is somebody that today coming into the Raptors could start at power forward and space the floor and really hoop. And become a 15 to 20 point per game score and just take the Raptors to a whole new level. Today, right now, unlace his shoes or tie his shoes and just go in. Not knowing no sets. He is a skilled bucket getter. Oh, he's a bucket getter and he's a skilled shooter. Like, he's nice. 6'8", 6'9", nice. Jordan Noir is nice. I'm telling y'all. So once I saw that name, I said, okay, he's going the under the radar route. I see what you're doing, Masai. I now like I like this trade. Given the context, like this is a beautiful trade. Given the context, you got Jordan Noir, who I promise you, if if Darko lets him hoop, and he'll you know Darko see Darko don't be politicking. He let, I know he's gonna see behind. You see him sh- you shooting, shooting, and practice like not missing. He's gonna let that boy hoop, and that boy could get into the starting lineup or come be a six man off the bench. But I dog, he really could hoop. He could hoop. You have a lineup of. Quickly, um, who do they have at the two? They played Dennis, but whoever you want to put, you could put R. You could put you could put Dennis, then put R. J. No, you have to put R. J. Yeah, yeah. I'll put quickly R. J. I'll put Jordan Noir, then I'll put Scotty, then I would put Jakob. That spacing is gonna be beautiful for Scotty to eat, for R. J. to eat and attack. And then Jordan, you have another, you have a shooter on the wing, and then you have quickly shooter on the wing. That is beautiful. That lineup right there, I'm telling y'all something. I'm telling y'all something beforehand. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. I like what the Raptors are doing. I like who they're becoming. I like just the fit that they're becoming. This is what I've always been asking for and been preaching for. My knock for this Masai not for the trade with the OG. Just because I wanted, I know what OG could have been. You know what I mean? Whatever. But I'm done with that. The point is, right now, this trade, getting that Jordan Noir right there is, that's what I'm telling you. Y'all will see if they let him hoop. But he is nice, for real. Add shooting. That's what they need. Shooting around Scotty. Shooting, shooting, shooting around Scotty. So then now, if you have a non-shooter like Jakob, 
it will be okay because it's only one. Scotty has enough of a shoot a shot now and enough of a, a floater bag and where he could get it off even if Jakob's in the paint. There's only one guy. You don't have to worry about a guy in the corner now helping off Pascal and now it's harder. Now he could really go to work. He could really get post-ups. Like, Scotty's game should just go to a whole new echelon. It's now you add Jordan Noir. Come on now, yo. So I love this trade. This, to me, was a win-win trade. Beautiful for the Raptors and way above and beyond for the Raptors, depend, uh, given the context. Given the context. Now, for the Indiana Pacers. Huh. This is going to be beautiful work for the Pacers. People might not be happy. I don't know what they're thinking in Indiana, but this right here. Dog, Toppin has been their, their starting power forward, and Toppin don't be shooting like that. But Toppin has been able to exist because why? You have a shooting big in Turner who the paint is free. So Toppin been even been, he be the one setting screens, bare times, and rolling. Like, now imagine, put Toppin back to the bench, or not back, but put him to the bench. Now you have Pascal at the four. Oh, and Pascal plays his best. I don't care about the numbers. His best season were the winning, and his individual play was here and here, was when he played with who? Abaka and Gasol, the first season that Kawhi was traded. That's when the Raptors went to the bubble and lost in seven games versus the Boston Celtics in the second round. That was Pascal Siakam's best individual and team year together because, to me, individual... Uh, 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 you know, obviously you look at individual, whatever they do, but I care about the, if you're winning at this max and you're having a great season, that to me is your best individual season. I don't care about just numbers. Pascal could get back to that because imagine Tyrese Halliburton and the Pascal Siakam PNR with the whole paint free because Turner's on the corner where he's spacing out and Turner could really shoot. And now Pascal could get in the post and he had this, you can't help off him because man's could really shoot. And you have Tyrese just, dog, Pascal's about to eat. I could see Ty uh, Pascal being a whole new all-star. I could see it. Like, this is a match made in heaven for Pascal. Like, he should, he should literally want to resign. He shouldn't want to go nowhere else. He shouldn't, like, this is where he should be. That's a home for him. Tyrese's going to elevate like this. You got Benedict. You got all these guys, yo. And then you have, the point is, you have no clash. Anywhere else, I think, if he's going to contend, there might be a clash somewhere. This right here, young, man's will give you the rock. You know, man's will give you post-ups, man. You'll be able to develop your clutch game because that's the next level for Pascal. Every, it's just developing his clutch game and becoming a clutch go-to guy in big games and playoff games, et cetera. Now you could develop that because they don't have one. It's Tyrese. You're the next. Because Tyrese is, you know, he's still playing within the flow. Now you could really go to the post. And no one, if they double you, you have shooters around you. Turner is right there shooting. Like, come on, fam. Like, it's a whole new world for Pascal that he's never seen and been used to. Then you got up-tempo. They run and they run and they run. That fits your game. Transit, like, come on now. He could even, he might even get to 30 average if he really, like, be serious. He could. And that's someone who already tells you that Pascal lacks skill. But I, I am not stupid. And I, again, that's why I be telling y'all, y'all be thinking I'm biased. I just be calling the truth. That's all. I'm not biased. I call a spade a spade. Pascal is still elite transition finisher. Pascal is still, he can shoot. But the more he finishes in the paint and the more he's having space around him, his shot now increases. Why? Which is why when he had the most space around him, that was his best shooting year from three-point line. If you go look at it. The year that... um. Yeah, the first year, but it was an all-star. He only has two years as an all-star. It's the year after uh, past, um, Kawhi got traded. He shot his best, 35% from the three. And then the other time he shot his best was along with Kawhi, but 36% from the three. Every other year was low and low and low because now when there's more of a log jam, see, every year since Scotty was drafted, 2021 season, he was literally now shooting 3.29%, 34%, 32-31. His highest was 36 and 35 was a year with Kawhi and the year after because they had shooting bigs. So when you have shooting bigs, what happens now? When you're in the paint a lot of the times, freely eating, and you know, you now have confidence that you can shoot the three now. It's just that's part of the rhythm. But when you now can't attack the paint like that, and it's like you have to think and pick your spots. Now you're going to be reluctant at the three, and now you're shooting the three hesitant. You're hesitant shooting the three, so now your percentages drop. It's just a, it's just a natural correlation. So his three-point percentages should increase. 
his paint, everything should increase. Like, he should increase for real. So, Indiana should be very, very happy because I think they now they, I think they now jump like this because you only lost Bruce. Bruce was crucial, but Pascal does a lot. He does a lot. So, like, they should elevate. They should elevate. They should elevate. And then now you have Athletic Topping come playing his perfect role where he's off the bench just being Swiss Army, doing whatever. He's not a he's not a lead enough shot creator wise to be a starting power forward in this NBA today, unless he's in the perfect system. You know what I mean? So it's the you know and it's just it is what it is. So you know we'll see how it goes. Let me know what y'all think because again, I think Pascal should have been traded from time. But again, I'm not mad at this given the context and the scenario. I'm ha- like Masai is really. This is why I be saying Raptors. Sh- <laughs> To retire Masai's suit. <laughs> he should stay here to the end of time and retire. He got us the only he got them the only ring. He like, come on now. Masai is him. And I just be like, you're him. There's another tier. You're supposed to be, you should be here. Trade him a, a time earlier. You would have got more. You'd be able to keep OG. Like, but again, again, but again, I'm not mad at him because when it's in the clutch time and now, oh damn, I got contract year. I gotta trade these guys. He's gonna maximize the trade for OG and for Pascal. That's who Masai is. And when you have that ability, I'm not mad at you holding on to your card and giving it an extra season to see how man's play out because, again, you have that elite ability. You have that elite superpower. So he thinks differently. I don't need to trade man's when they're hot because I could trade them whenever because I'm going to maximize. You know what I mean? So Masai is Masai, yo. That boy, <laughs> he different, yo. Anyways, it's true talks. It's true talks. Share, sure like, and subscribe. We out here. There's no doubt here and there's no drought here. You feel me? I appreciate y'all. You already know. Again, click that notification button so you know when I'm here. Because I'm here. You feel me? I appreciate y'all. You already know. We out here. There's no doubt here. And there's no drought here. You feel me? You already know. And I'm out, man.